Okay. Good evening, everybody. Everybody online. We're going to be doing everything just a little bit different today. We're going to be uh, doing uh, questions, and we'll see if we can't get to the bottom with some good, credible answers. Um, if we don't find answers tonight, maybe we'll get even more questions online, maybe put it in the comments type of a thing. And whatever we don't answer tonight, we'll try and get it written down and then come back and maybe we'll teach on that a little bit later. But with that said, let's go ahead and pray. Here we go. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. We thank you for just bringing us all together tonight to hear and listen and speak about your word and to get a little bit deeper and get better answers for ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So... With that said, let's open it up and see what kind of questions we have. Who's got a question? And hopefully we don't have to wait five minutes. Go ahead. What are we huh? What do you have a question about? What do you have a question about God? That's what the lesson's about. So if you've got a question of something that you've been confused of in the past, other than that brownie and scarfing it down, all right, I'm answering your question, right? So let's, uh, let's figure out the things that we don't know about God. What you got? When the world actually began? Do we know when the world actually began? Wonderful question. So, there's two ways to answer this, and there's two trains of thought, and I think both of them can lead you into very good answers in very good places, especially when you get into those debates or conversations with people, right, on how old is the earth, right? And we've got all this carbon dating, we've got all this information out there. Some people are on the it is only, you know, about four to 5,000 years old, right? And then there's people that say, no, 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 no. It's millions and millions of years old. So, what I want to do is I want to tackle those people that think it's millions and millions of years. Are you ready? ready. I got good answers. Okay? So, we'll... We'll go with the New American Standard Bible version just because that's what I got right here in front of me. And we're going to go from Genesis 1, starting in verse 1, okay? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Did you hear that? Yes. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now watch what happens next, okay? The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Already, heavens and earth exist. He has not yet said what phrase. He has not said, let there be light. It's dark. He's hovering over the waters of the earth. The earth is already there, right? The first day has not started yet. You following? So, how much time there is in between how long he is hovering over the waters and the point when he actually says, let there be light, not quite sure. However, we know one thing. In order for there to be light, and we got to kind of talk about science and physics, right? Light has a wave and it also acts as a particle, right? So, with that said, it moves in a direction. For there to be movement, there has to be time. Time doesn't actually start until God says, uh, oh, let's start time. So, verse 3 says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, God called the light day, and, he, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. Then God said, let the, there be an expanse in the midst of the water, and let it separate the waters 
uh, the waters from the waters. God made the expanse and separated the waters which were below the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse heaven. Okay? And there was evening and there was morning a second day. So you hear that, right? So in the first day, what did he create? Day and night. So... How long, how long was it between when God said, right, He created the heavens and the earth, and then He hovered over them, and then He said, let there be light, right? So, we don't know. There could be an infinite amount of time in there that we have no idea of, so it actually can fit that bill. The first day is when time starts. And we don't actually know when God actually finally said, let's hit the clock, right? So day one, which is where we start our 4,000 year or 5,000 year or 6,000 year, whatever it is, that, that young earth theory versus like the millions and billions of years, God could have been hovering for millions and billions of years. That's great, wonderful, grand. It was created. It was already there. And he hung out for a while. And then we started everything else. Does it make sense? That's my personal belief. Because now you have all this other stuff that science wants to throw in that we know we've got these knowns, right? of if we go this far back in time, this is where the stars were, this is where this was, this is where that was, and everything leads, leads all the way back to when there was the explosion, right? When everything came into being. So, how long? Who knows? Truthfully, that answer will be Revealed, I believe, 100% when we go to meet our Maker, though. How, however, I think our Bible kind of leaves that gap in there for a reason. He knew science was going to get to the point of where we we're going to be asking this question. Right? What do you got? Absolutely. Right. Right. So there's also in other scripture, I can't remember what, where that scripture is, but I think it says, uh, I, I have to summarize it or give the gist of it, but it's basically a day for the Lord is a thousand years. Right? So, which, right, we've got seven days in the beginning of creation. It could have been 7,000 years, but it still doesn't make up for millions and billions. So that's why I think it's interesting when you see, you actually read that and realize, no, the heaven and the earth were already there, but how long were they there? And how long was he hovering over those waters until he actually started the rest of creation and, and started creating all the other things to go along with it? So, a thousand years? That's as close as I think we can get with that interpretation of this, here's a day. But, yeah, what you, what you got, Noah? Speak up. I don't really know how exactly dinosaurs got extinct. What's that? How did dinosaurs get extinct? How did dinosaurs get extinct? Well, science teaches us that, you know, an asteroid came and hit the earth and wiped most of them out, if not all, but I think it's just most. Why? There's a lot of evidence of them walking around with men. They got footprints of a man right next to a footprint of a dinosaur. So that can only happen, right, if you're getting layers and layers and layers of dirt over top of stuff over time. Well, that 
footprint goes deeper and deeper into earth and the only way they can be side by side at the same time is if they both stepped in the mud at the same time you ever watch out here after it rains your footprints kind of go away right that's just one rain so think about at least a year of rain how much dirt has gone over that area now think about hundreds of years but what science tells us is thousands, millions of years in between us and them. I'm more of the opinion, no, we were probably all here about the same time. And then the flood probably wiped a lot of it out. Right? That way now we can see, oh, wait a minute. We got footprints right next to each other. That's my opinion, though. Do I 100% know? No, but our Bible in Job talks about behemoth and leviathan. And the description of behemoth is a dinosaur. we got to look that up. Mm -hmm. Let's look that up. I want to say it's Job 38. I'm probably wrong. Job 38 or 40? Let's see. Let me see if I can't find it really quick. Mm -hmm -hmm. There we go. Let's see. Here, somebody, let's see. Yeah, Job 40. You ready? Check this out. Uh, 40, verse 15. Look at behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. With strength it has in its loins what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are close-knit. Now watch this. How big is a cedar? Out here in our, on our property, the cedars are somewhere between 20 and 30 feet tall. Right? Some can be up to like 40, 50 feet tall. Right? But if you think about that, from... Let's just, let's just take 30 feet from this wall all the way to our back wall is 30 feet. That's how long its tail was. And it sways like a cedar back and forth. Now what in history has had a tail that long? The only thing that fits the bill is actually a very specific dinosaur. You guys know it as a brontosaurus. So, our Bible talks about them and God creating them, right? And it also, later on, here, we'll keep reading it real quick here. So, its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. You hear that? Bones are tubes of bronze. That means it's hollow. Believe it or not, if you look at the brontosaurus bones, going all the way up its neck, guess what? They're hollow. That's right. If you actually had like that full bone, if it was solid all the way through, it wouldn't be able to carry its own weight. Okay? Because of the amount of muscle that was around it, surrounding it, it wouldn't have been able to carry its own weight within our Earth's gravity. Okay, so that's, that's one thing, right? And then it says its limbs like rods of iron, but its legs, right, and its ribs and things like that were completely solid. Why? It's got to bear all that weight. 
but the higher you went in the neck, the more air pockets there were. Interesting, right? Okay, so let's, let's keep going. It ranks first among the works of God, yet its maker can approach it uh, with his sword. The hills bring it their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants it lies hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal it in their shadow. The poplars by the stream surround it. A raging river does not alarm it. It is secure through the Jordan, should surge against its mouth. Can anyone capture it by the eyes or trap it and pierce its nose? Right? That, that in peace, meaning if men tried to capture it, kind of leading us to believe, like, wait a minute, somebody may have tried this at some point, but who's actually been able to capture one? Nobody. Right? And then on top of that, it says... A surging river. It doesn't care anything about it. It doesn't worry about it. Why? Because that dinosaur can walk into that river and it doesn't get moved. That's how big and heavy and stout it is. It's, it's strong enough to stand against that raging river. No big deal. You have to speak up. Oh, no, it's probably million or so pounds. Uh, they're, they're huge. Okay. It always comes back to the dinosaurs, doesn't it? <laughs> Michelle, you got a question. Does the Bible say anything about other planets in our solar system? As a matter of fact... I think it does. I think it talks about wandering stars. I remember you talking about it in a couple of times before. Too. Yeah. I'm trying to remember where it's at. <sighs> One thing it does say is it does talk about putting all the stars in the solar system, right? Um, I want to say that's right there. It's in Genesis again. Somebody, somebody Google the wandering stars in the Bible for me. Because I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be signs for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the expanse of heavens to give light on the earth and it was so uh, God made the two great lights the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night he made the stars also God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and separate the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So, that doesn't talk about the wandering stars. That talks about the moon and the sun. Mm. I'm going to have to look it up now. I'm going to have to find it. But I'm pretty sure it says something somewhere in there about the wandering stars. And the reason that we know that they knew about this is um, you go back to the, the wise men and they understood that certain stars moved and when they moved into the constellation of Leo and it was specifically Jupiter, which is the king planet, and then it went around the king star, which is Regulus, which is in Leo, which is a sign of the tribe of Judah, right? It's a lion. So, we've got something coming from the tribe of Judah, which is a king of kings. And what happened was Jupiter came in and it actually circled around Regulus. So it's like the king planet circling around the king star. 
basically that happened to signify that's that's what they say the um what is it um star of bethlehem it's kind of argued that that's what that is so they knew about this type of stuff but I, i'll see if i can't find the the scripture that talks about it i could i could just be getting myself mixed up but i'm I'm pretty sure that's there. I'll, I'll see if I can't find it, and if I do, for everyone online, I'll put it in the the comments. Is that good for now? For now, we'll come back to it. You were next. What you got? So if like the asteroid and everything hit the Earth, why isn't there like a huge crater? In the Who says there isn't? Oh. So. You're assuming, right, that everything is land on Earth. Oh, hold on. What percentage of the Earth is water? 75% of the Earth is water, right? So, you've got a 75% chance of a comet or an asteroid hitting water versus land. And now what else do we know about the water? Well, right now, we haven't even explored, I think it's some crazy percentage. It's, a, it's very low. It's something like 15 to 20% of the ocean's bottom. That's all that we've seen. Plus on top of that, right, uh, it's too deep to go in certain places. Like the Marianas Trench is, I think it's the deepest part of the ocean and i've seen a video where they can fit the sears tower something like a hundred and two hundred times that's how deep it is so the tallest skyscraper in the world well it was at one point right you could put in the bottom of that a hundred to two hundred times before it came up to the top of the surface and i think that was like 150 feet tall or something? I don't know, it's some crazy height. Anybody know? It's a ridiculous height. Regardless, it's too deep for us to go down there. So if an asteroid comes and it goes all the way down that deep, we're not gonna see it. And, uh, but yeah, we haven't explored most of the bottom of the ocean. So, believe it or not, there are a lot of asteroid sites that they have found that are like a mile wide, two miles wide, ten miles wide. And there's this big ring, crater, but now guess what's there? All along it, a big jungle. That Not everything's going to be like a desert. You have to remember, the Earth repairs itself constantly, right? And... And it also continues to have growth and vegetation, all that kind of stuff happens. So getting all the evidence 100% of the time, it's, it's hard to do, right? However, plants continue to grow and start to hide things. But they have found a lot of, you know, sites like this where there is craters of asteroids hitting the earth. Here's a really good question though. It's just coming to mind. Did you know that if we didn't have Jupiter as a big asteroid magnet, right? We got a big planet out there and its gravitational pull is so strong, right? That's one of those requirements. I think I talked about it. What day did? Was it a week ago, week and a half? Irreducible complexity, right? If we didn't have Jupiter, Earth wouldn't be here anymore. Like, probably within a year's time, we wouldn't be here anymore. Why? Because so many asteroids are constantly sucked away to hit Jupiter that come out of the asteroid belt. So if that wasn't there, guess where they'd be headed? Towards us, towards the sun, right? We're, we're not that far away when it comes to all the planets in a row, right? We're relatively close compared to the, all the other ones. So, 
Now we've talked about asteroids. Man, there's, okay, I, I think, go ahead. There you go. Did you hear what she said? Could you tell while you were there? You've been to Wetumpka, Alabama, and it's an asteroid site. Could you tell? You see what I'm saying now? Okay. What you got? He did. Like to us now, since it was so long ago. Okay, you ready? So, there's, there's one small thing we've got to tweak with the question. So number one is you said, if God wants us to believe in Him, and He wants us to have faith, right, why doesn't He walk around so we can see Him? Well, would you have to have faith, number one, if you saw Him? No. No. Because you would see him. Do you need faith to realize that I'm real? Why? Because I'm walking around here with you, right? So, part of that question is, we'll leave out the faith part because it would no longer require faith to believe in God because we would know he was real, why we've seen him. How did he start in the garden with Adam and Eve? He walked in the garden with Adam. He was physically there. Adam saw him. But what happened? Um, Eve ate fruit from the tree and took Adam to the world. Right. So they got tricked. They got deceived into eating the fruit that they were forbidden to eat. They brought sin into the world which separated them from God. Why did God have to separate himself from man at that point? Because evil cannot exist in his physical presence. Why? It would be destroyed immediately. If anybody looks on the face of God, somebody look that up for me so I can read that scripture. Somebody look on, uh, looking on the face of God and death. That way we can get that. But basically, because this is corrupted, right? If God were to come up and you look him in his face and you shook his hand and say, I believe, you would immediately die. Yeah. This is no good. This body, because it has sin within it, is no good, and you would immediately die. How do we know that as well? There's multiple places we can see this, but I want the scripture specifically that says, if we see God face to face, we die. Right? What is it? Exodus 33.20, thank you. And I think he tells Moses that directly, right? I believe so. Mm -hmm. So... Hold on, hold on. Let's let's finish this question and then we'll go. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish this question and we'll we'll come back to it. Okay, just remember it. We're not just answering it for AJ. We're answering it for everybody that's going to watch a video later. So Exodus what thirty three twenty. So. Then Moses said, "Now show me your glory." This is 18. And the Lord said, I will cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I, ha I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me, where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Okay? 
Why? Because you're going to die if you see his face. Later on, when he gives the priests all the laws and commandments and everything like that, they had the Holy of Holies. Now listen up, AJ, I'm telling you. There was the Holy of Holies in the temple. So basically, I don't have a board. You've got a throne room, right? You've got a courtyard, let's say this. Courtyard, and then about here, right? You've got the holy place. There's a veil, you walk in, and then there's the Holy of Holies, and then there's another one to go inside of, right? If you went in there and you had sin on you whatsoever that was not covered up by some sort of sacrifice, the lad, the bull, anything, if that priest, and it was only one person a year that could go in, and when they went in, guess what they did? They tied a rope around their leg, right? Because if he went in there and he wasn't right with the Lord, are you listening? If he was not right with God when he went in, he would die. Boom. Right there. And then they would have to tug on that rope and pull him out because if anybody else went in there and they hadn't gone through all the formalities and all the rules to be clean and without sin, they were going to die too. So that's why they tied the rope, pulled him on out. Because if you got in God's presence and you're not right, you'll die. So, you want God walking around with you right now? How many things you do wrong today? Don't answer. It's a trick question. <laughs> but think about that. If you've done anything wrong today, or at all ever in the ten years of your life, and you saw God face to face right now in this body, what would happen to you? you die right then and there. So he can no longer present himself the same way he used to. Right? He can't do it that way no more. Now, here's the great thing about it. Your spirit, your soul, who you actually are in here, not this thing, right? That's been changed. When you accepted Jesus, that became a new creation. So we also see... Other places in our book, uh, Paul goes up. Uh, I want to say that's in Corinthians. And then uh, John goes up and it says what? In the Spirit. And then he's in the throne room, right? And they see God. And the, the prophets would see this as well. But they were in the Spirit. They're not in the body. So you've got to be able to something in the spirit they're not actually seeing it in their body because what did what did he do with Moses no here hide I'm gonna put my hand up so you can't see my face so you don't die I need you to do some things man I got a job for you right so you hide but everybody else they got to see God's glory in the spirit when they went to heaven in the spirit you follow okay did you have another question Because he was in this. He was in man form. They didn't see the full glory of God. They saw him in his human form as Jesus. So why didn't the ones that whipped him die? Why didn't everybody while Jesus is walking around die? Because he was in a man's form. He brought himself down to our level. If you saw the full glory, right? Jesus didn't always walk around shining like bright lights, right? Otherwise, they would know right away, no, this is the Son of God, right? He only did this one time. He, did, he went to the Mount of Transfiguration, and he said he was white, as white, as white, as white could be. And then Moses said, I think it was Elijah, showed up, and they were dead. They showed up. And Peter wanted to make a tabernacle for him and just stay up there forever with him like that. Now here's the crazy thing. Peter and John, I think it's Peter and John went up, right? Regardless, I know Peter for sure. They went up 
and they saw Jesus do that on the mountain, right? But they didn't die. How come? They didn't see him in his full glory, and he was already impressed. So if he was that impressed, another thing, Moses goes to the burning bush, and he's up there for 40 days, right? And when he comes down, his face is so shiny and bright because it has gotten that close to the presence of God that he took on some of that. Right? So he comes down and his hair is white, his beard's white, and his face is shining. And he was scaring everybody so much that he had to put a veil over his face. He was freaking them out. Because he got this much of the glory of God on him. Imagine if you had the whole weight. Believe it or not, glory actually kind of means weight. So if you had the whole weight of God sitting on you, it would crush you. You follow that? Okay. Somebody else had a question, I think. Yeah. Um, you and form, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? You look upon God and you die. Does that mean that you can't go to heaven at four and see him? No. So, question is, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? You've received Jesus, you've become a new creation in Christ. Has your body been redeemed? No. Your spirit and your soul is what we're talking about that has become a new creation, right? Body, soul, and spirit, right? Those are the three things that make you up. This body is still corrupted and we're waiting for this to be redeemed. Our soul and our spirit have already been uh, sanctified, right? You, you are the righteousness of Christ. You get to go and be with Him. That's why I think Paul says in some other locations, if, if there's some Christians claiming to be Christians and they're not acting so Christian and they don't feel bad about it and they continue to work in that way, he says, put them out into the world. Let Satan have them. Why? It's better that they die. Why? So they can go ahead and receive their true glory and be with God. It's better they die so they quit nailing Jesus to the cross. You follow? Okay. What is heaven like? Well, I've never been there. <laughs> so, I think we can only have some understanding of what it is. But it does say, uh, what is it? As in heaven? On earth as it is in heaven. Right? But that's kind of alluding to, let's let the perfection of what's up there come on down here. Now, I think we only get a glimpse of what heaven can be like. But know this as well. We've talked a lot on these Wednesdays about these angels falling, right? And what we have to realize is the old heaven and the old earth, which we live in, go away. Why the old heaven as well? Old heaven have to go away. Well, we see that Lucifer was one of the angels, right? How did he fall? He was in God's presence. And already he's thinking, I want to take his throne. I want to be him. He's living in the presence of God and he's thinking like that. So I think there may have been some things that went awry, and I'm not talking exactly like in the throne room because as soon as that, you know, happened, God's like, no, nope, you're out of here. Which is still even merciful. Believe it or not, that's merciful. That's God being merciful over those angels. He's given them some time. But that's all they got is a little bit of time. It's borrowed time, right? So, what exactly is it like? I don't know. I think it, in the throne room, perfect. 
But does that mean we're in the throne room at all times? I don't know. Probably. It says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So perfection, but all that's supposed to go away and be replaced with something new. Why would God replace something that was lacking anything? So that's what it says to me. The old one lacks something in some way. I don't know what. Does that make sense? Yeah? You got another one? You go to the underworld and like will you ever see or like What do you mean by the underworld? That's a real complicated question in itself, by the way. No, but what do you mean? Like, it's a good question, keep going with it. Are you asking me if you go to hell? Yeah. You just didn't want to use that word because you thought you'd get in trouble? Oh, okay. So, going to hell. What's, what is hell like? Is that the question? Like or will you, will you know God is real in hell? Is that... Will you feel His presence? Feel him, see him, yeah. touch him. No. So that's what hell is. Hell's not the burning fire that you think it is. The lake of fire is this, and here's hell. Something different, right? Hell is the lack of God's presence 100%. Right? So I, I talked about this a couple weeks ago as well. Imagine this. Imagine, right, that stuff that goes on in the world right now, is there bad things that happen in the world? Yeah. Scary things that happen in the world. Yeah. But is there love in the world? Yeah. Take all the love out. What does the world look like now? That's God's presence. The only reason we have love in this world is because of His presence. We only know love, right, and that's Scripture. We only know love because God showed us love first. You follow me? So now, take His presence out of this world and there's your picture of what hell is. He's not there. There's no love anymore. Everything is selfishness. Everything is backbiting. People just looking out for themselves and attacking each other on what, you know, what's yours is mine. Right? That's that's a pretty awful place to be in. So if there's no love, right? If there's no God's presence, there's no love. And so here's here's the thing about it, right? Uh, a selfish person, right? Do they love anybody other than themselves? No. So here's the real question: If somebody goes to hell and they know God is real, and they confess He's real, do they want anything to do with Him? No. Why? Because even when they felt His love in this world, right, they've at least got to experience His presence in one way or another through love in this world. If they didn't want it now, what makes you think they're going to want it then? They're not going to because it's all about them. They would have to humble themselves to Him and His glory, and they're like, no, it's all about me. You follow? Somebody that's that selfish, they don't care about God. All they care about is themselves. All we know is this, and I just read it. I will have mercy on who I will have mercy on. That's what, that's what God's words are. It's up to Him, basically. But from what we know, and what we read in here, there's only one real way. What's the way? Who is the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus. He's the way. Right? 
So if that's the only way and you don't accept him now, would you accept him then? It says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, but not everybody's going to want that relationship. There's a difference, right? Think about it this way. Satan believes in God. Yeah. He was one of his angels. He knows he's real. But he wants nothing to do with him. Do you, do you get that? So the possibility is there that there is something exists that knows God's real but wants nothing to do with him. He's bitter and angry and upset and he wants to be him versus submit himself to his will. Right? Satan doesn't want to submit himself to God's will. He wants to do it on his own. It's all about him. Would he have more power? All power comes from one place. All power belongs to one being. God. So, if you think somebody's powerful, they only became that way because God made them that way. He gives and takes as He sees fit. Right? So, the only power Satan ever had was because God allowed him to have some of that power. But once Satan turned his back on him, he said, no, no, out you go. Right? You all right? Thinking about it, huh? Okay. What you got, Noah? Right. Satan wants to be better than God. But how can you be better than something that is infinite and lacks nothing? Can't. Right. He wants to take the throne from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit, from the Father. God. He wants to be God. And he does everything he can to make people believe that he is God. Yes. Okay. Where did God come from? God has always been. He was not created. It's, it's hard for us. So the question is, where did God come from? The question in itself, right, means we want to understand an infinite being. But we're finite beings, meaning we have a start and an end, right? He's before everything. He was not created and he always has been there. Before this created the entire universe just by speaking it, right? And if, if you think about a created God, right, it means something. Think about all creation. Let's think about you creating something, right? If you create something, will it ever be as good as you? No? Why? Do you have the power to like build a robot or something that will have exactly what you are? Oh, I thought you meant like anything. Anything. Non living, living, whatever. And truthfully, you don't even have the power over yourself to create life that comes from the womb, right? That's that's not you. That's his design. We're saying outside of that over here. You create something. Will it ever be as good as what you are? So. No. So think about this. He is an infinite being, meaning he lacks nothing. And this is also the argument for there is only one God. Right? If there is an infinite being, there cannot be two of them because to have two, it means that you have to have one is lacking something that the other doesn't have which would no longer define infinite, right? 
So if one lacks something that the other doesn't, oh, there's only one that can be infinite. What is God? What is God? What is he? He is unlike anything, anywhere. He is everything. He is all knowledge. He is all love. He is uh, all knowing, all seeing. He is spirit, but he's also physical, right? And how do we know that? Well, if you look at John, right? The, the very beginning of John kind of says that all things came into being through who? Jesus. So we'll read it just real quick. Uh, starting in verse 6. There came a man sent from God whose name was John, he came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. The world was made through him. Now, I think... I think there's other versions that say creation. Oh, here, here we go. Let me read this one part just real quick. He came to that which belonged to him, and they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him, but as to many receive and welcome him, he gave authority to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in his name. Uh, yeah, good enough. So was he in heaven and creating everything? No. Heaven didn't exist. In the beginning, God created what? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It sounds like he created the heavens first and then earth, right? Because he, he proceeds with heaven and then earth. And also, if you read in Job 38, it says the, uh, the angels, well, it alludes to them, right? The stars or the sons of God, I think it's the sons of God were watching as God laid the foundations of the earth. So I believe the heavens were created, the spirit first, Matter of fact, yeah. And then, the earth. Say that one more time. Was the earth and us all underwater? Yes. We just read that, actually. Because the expanse that he talks about to separate the waters, right? He's talking about creating land, and he's separating the waters from themselves. But the whole earth was water at one point and then he makes the land rise out of it good questions oh you just covered everybody's no, questions no you're fine what time is it it's almost eight some people are getting bored <laughs> 7.47. Oh, the storm? Okay. Bedtime. Bedtime's fair enough. Okay, well, I guess that's where we'll wrap it. Great questions. Do y'all enjoy this night? I, I enjoy yeah. this night. Yes, yes. We gotta, we gotta get to the, the root of a lot of these. What was the question I, I didn't get all the way through? The wandering stars. I'll find that. The planets. I'll see the planets and I'll put it in the YouTube description or comments but okay let's go ahead and pray and we'll get out of here Heavenly Father we thank you once again for bringing us together this evening we thank you for all the great questions and having great answers and ask that you work on everybody's minds and help to explain better than I possibly could in Jesus name Amen